Are you a big movie fan and want to learn how to make this 80s logo? Make your own Back to the Future logo right now! My name is Diana Toma and I am a graphic designer and illustrator for over 10 years. In this Envato Touch Plus tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit a font in Adobe Illustrator, how to use warp effects and how to color an 80s style logo. Before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of design assets, photos, templates, fonts, music and many more. That's millions of creative assets all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe now with the link in the description. Let's open Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from the drop-down menu. Set the width to 850 pixels and the height to 600 pixels. Keep the color mode to RGB and the resolution to 72. Once done, hit Create. Go to Window in the menu bar and open all the panels that have this check mark. Along with the Control Panel. Next, go to Edit, Preferences General and set the keyboard increment to 1 pixel. Also, go to Units and make sure that they are set like this. Hit OK. I searched Envato Elements for the best Back to the Future logo font and from many great options, the Tosca font stood out to me. We will distort it a little to make it perfect, so let's go ahead and download it. We are ready to start making the Back to the Future logo. Grab the Type tool and in the Character panel, use the Tosca bold font and set the size to 216 points. Now click on your artboard and type back in capitals. Next, set the tracking to minus 50 to bring the letters closer to each other. Grab again the type tool, click on your artboard and type 2. In the character panel, use again the Tosca bold font Reduce the size to 80 points, keep the tracking to minus 50, and set the horizontal scale to 125%. Looks good. Now arrange the piece of text under the letter B, like this. Let's type the next word, the, and change the settings in the character panel. This time let's use the Tosca regular font. Set the size to 72 points. Set the tracking to minus 25. Put the horizontal scale back to 100% and set the vertical scale to 125%. Move the piece of text under the previous one. Still using the type tool, type future on your artboard. Use the Tosca bold font and set the size to 176 points. Now set the tracking to minus 65. Keep the horizontal scale to 100% and also put the vertical scale to 100%. Move the piece of text and align the letter F with the letter A from above. Looks pretty good. Let's activate the rulers by going to View Rulers Show Rulers and drag a guideline in the left side to make sure the letters are aligned. If they are not, you can do so by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Also drag a guideline to make sure the letters A and F are aligned. Let's move two a bit upwards and drag a guideline above it. Now select the and future holding the shift key and move them upwards to align them. Also drag a guideline at the bottom to make sure the letters are aligned. That looks good. Now let's get rid of the guides by going to view, guides, height guides. Select everything on your artboard with the Selection tool and go to Type, Create Outlines, followed by Object, Ungroup. You will get the individual letters and you can see them in the Layers panel. Select only the letter B and go to Object, Compound Path, Release. 
Let's change the fill color of the inner shapes to something else so we can see them. Set the one from above to width 22 pixels and height 20 pixels. Set the other one to width 21 pixels and height 18 pixels. Let's align them a little bit. Now select all three shapes holding the shift key and in the Pathfinder panel press minus front. This will be the new letter B. Select the letter A and go to Object, Compound Pad Release. Let's change the fill color of the inner shape to red again so we can see it and set it to width 25 pixels and height 38 pixels. Switch to the Direct Selection tool. Select only these two points holding the Shift key and move them about 8 pixels downwards by pressing the down arrow key on your keyboard. Grab the Selection tool again, select the two shapes, and in the Pathfinder panel, press minus front. Let's focus on the letter K. Grab the Delete Anchor Point tool and click on these points to remove the curves. Switch to the Anchor Point tool and click on the corner points to remove the existing handles. Grab the Direct Selection tool, drag a selection over these points, and move them downwards about 15 pixels. Now select only this corner point, move it to the right a bit. Select this corner point and move it to the right a bit more. and the top corner point, move it to the right about 12 pixels. For the letter C, drag a selection over these two endpoints and move them to the right until they go over the letter K. Before we distort the letter F, let's activate the Smart Guides by going to View, Smart Guides. Let's zoom in a bit, take the pen tool and draw a triangle shape in the top left side of the letter F. Like this. Now with the selection tool, select both shapes and in the Pathfinder panel, press Unite. With the Direct Selection tool, select the four ending points of the arms holding the Shift key and head over to the Align panel. Make sure that Align to Selection is active and then press Horizontal Align Right. Now let's repeat the exact same thing for the letter E. For the last letter E, we will make two of the arms shorter. Use the Direct Selection tool to drag a selection over the end points of the middle and bottom arms. Move them to the left, about 10 pixels, pressing the arrow keys on your keyboard. Move the letter E closer to the letter R. Now take the Direct Selection tool and use it to select only this corner point. Drag it a bit to the right so they overlap. Switch to the Anchor Point tool and make the leg of the letter R rounded. Like this. We are done with the Back to the Future logo text and we will continue with the arrow. Take the Pen tool and use it to draw a triangle-like shape in the right side of the letter K. The Smart Guides are still active and they help us very much to do this. That looks good. Next, take the Rectangle tool, click on your artboard, set the width to 30 pixels and the height to 78 pixels. Hit OK. 
With the selection tool, move this rectangle next to the triangle shape. Like this. Go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in front. Move the shape to the right, holding the Shift key. And in the Transform panel, set the width to 20 pixels. Let's move it a bit closer. Go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in front. Move the shape to the right and change the width to 19 pixels. Go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in front. Move the shape to the right and change the width to 16 pixels. Let's do this one more time. Move the shape to the right and set the width to 15 pixels. With the selection tool, select the first rectangle and extend it over the triangle. Now select both shapes holding the Shift key and press Unite in the Pathfinder panel to obtain the head of the arrow. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and drag a selection over the top points of the rectangles. Move them to the left holding the Shift key. The arrow is pretty much done. Before we continue with the warp effects, let's select the word back with the selection tool. In the Pathfinder panel press Unite and then go to Object, Compound Path, Make. Now select the word Future, press Unite in the Pathfinder panel, followed by Object, Compound Path, Make. Select the entire Back to the Future logo and go to Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Warp. Choose Arch from the drop-down menu, check Vertical and apply a minus 40% bend. Hit OK. Follow up with Object, Expand. Go back to Object Envelope Distort Make with Warp. Put the bend back to 0% and apply a minus 40% horizontal distortion. Hit OK. Follow up with Object Expand again. Next, go to the Object menu Envelope Distort Make with Mesh. Choose one row and one column and hit OK. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and use it to select the bottom left point and move it to the right. Select these two points holding the Shift key and move them to the right to elongate the logo a bit. Finally, select the top right point and move it upwards a little. Once done, go to the Object menu and choose Expand again. The Back to the Future Vector logo is done and now it's time to color it. Select the entire movie logo with the Selection tool and then go to Object and Group twice. Now select only the word Back and in the Gradient panel let's create a simple linear gradient. The first color stop is Red 255, Green 228, and blue 7. The last color stop is red 229, green 39, and blue 34. Set the gradient angle to 88 degrees. And now let's save it in the swatches panel by simply dragging it there. Next, select the arrow group, apply the same gradient from the swatches panel and set the angle to 90 degrees. Select the word Future, apply the same gradient, click on Reverse Gradient and set the angle to 95 degrees. Now select 2 and the holding the Shift key and go to Object. Compound Path, Make. Color it with the same gradient 
click on reverse gradient and set the angle to 90 degrees. Select the entire movie logo again and apply a stroke using any color. In the stroke panel, increase the size to 3 points. Now select only the word back and let's replace the blue stroke with a linear gradient. The first color stop is red 253, green 248, and blue 250. Add a new color stop in the middle and set the location to 50%. Set the color to red 0, green 0, and blue 0. The last color stop is the same as the first, the red 253, green 248, and blue 250. Set the gradient angle to 85 degrees. Now drag the gradient in the swatches panel to save it. Select the arrow group, replace the blue stroke with the same gradient, but set the angle to 90 degrees. Next, select the words to the and replace the blue stroke with a new linear gradient. The first color stop is red 78, green 76, and blue 82. Add a new color stop at the 50% location and set the color to red 253, green 248, and blue 250. The last color stop is red 0, green 0, blue 0. Once done, set the gradient angle to 90 degrees. Now select the word future and replace the blue stroke with another gradient. The first color stop is red 254 green 248 and blue 250. The middle stop is red 0, green 0, blue 0 and the last color stop is red 78, 76 and blue 82. Set the gradient angle to 98 degrees. At this point, the Back to the Future logo is done. It definitely looks like an 80s logo. Let's select everything and go to Object Group. Zoom out a bit. And to align the logo in the center of the artboard in the Align panel, make sure that Align to Artboard is active. Then click on Horizontal Align Center followed by Vertical Align Center. The cool portal background used is from Envato Elements and you can find the link to it in the description box below. One final thing that you can do is to select the movie logo, go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow and apply these settings. Once done, hit OK. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, hit the like button to show me that you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe if you are not already, and don't forget to click the bell icon to receive notifications of new tutorials. I am Diana Toma and thank you for watching.